Hello everyone and welcome back. It's been quite a while, but today we're taking a look at the upcoming season of Dragons Rising. The first teaser for the season was released a couple weeks ago, and so far it's looking really interesting. Here's a look at my top 5 hopes for Dragons Rising Season 2. My first hope is that this season gives more focus to Eren. And I have to say he was great in Season 1, it was a great introduction for him, but Sora definitely got the more meaningful story. It seemed very much like Season 1 was Sora's season with villains and antagonists who were very personal to her. Eren had a good story about finding his own path, but it didn't feel as deep compared to Sora, who had this whole story of rejecting her parents and embracing who she is. Season 1 set a great foundation, but it's time for Season 2 to take the next step. They could lead more to how Eren feels about not having powers, or maybe set up an entirely new story. With the exception of him gaining powers, I'm not really so concerned about how they approach this, I just hope they do something meaningful. Dragon's Rising Season 1 had a very technological and futuristic feel, and it seems like Season 2 could do the exact opposite. Imperium was a very advanced society, and of course had a lot of technology, but now in Season 2, we have these wolf warriors in this forest, this ancient blood moon ritual, it's a totally different vibe. The aesthetics of this season feel very mysterious and unsettling almost. That to me feels very different from Season 1, and it goes to show that Ninjago still has a ton of ideas in store, and the fact that it's able to switch up the aesthetics like this, it honestly keeps things interesting. And I'm really excited to learn what the Blood Moon is, how it works into Ross's plan. There's a lot of old mysteries from Season 1, but of course, Season 2 brings a cast of new mysteries too. Overall, I just like the general feeling and environment of this season. My next hope is a little bit more of a concern, and it has to do with Cole's story. Last month, a series of shorts called The Elemental Max was released, and these are set in between Seasons 1 and 2. At the end of Season 1, Cole goes off on his own journey to find Master Wu. However, Cole also appears in the shorts. It was confirmed that his quest happens off-screen, so we won't actually see it. This is a little bit disappointing, but I still have faith. Doc Wyatt has said that this journey still will be important to the plot, and it has implications for Ninjago's future. I hope it features prominently in the season, and that we see a lot of flashbacks of it, because it was a story I was really looking forward to. Relegating the story to a book or just completely off-screen, would definitely be disappointing given its potential, as so maybe Season 2 could gradually unfold the story, telling us what happened to Cole and where Wu is. I think it would make for an interesting narrative where Cole actually knows the outcome of the story, and it's just we as viewers and the other ninja who are learning too. I'm very excited to learn more about the Source Dragons, and it's a huge new part of Ninjago's lore. Again, the first season set a great foundation, it told us what the Source Dragons were, it showed us one of them, but there's six more Source Dragons, and there's gotta be much more backstory. Personally, I believe this season will show us the Fire Source Dragon, due to the fire-themed logo, whereas the first season showed us the Lightning Dragon. And so if this theory holds true, I'm really excited to see the Fire Dragon, and also where the Lightning Dragon from Season 1 went. But really, I just want to learn about their history. Source Dragons are the best addition to Ninjago's lore in years. They've already made the world of Ninjago feel so much bigger, including concepts such as elemental powers, as well as dragons in general. And it seems like these seven dragons are their own characters, and they all have their own backstories and experiences. I'd like to learn more about their interactions with each other, as well as any past conflicts, and what they have to do with the merge. Even the idea of an evil source dragon being Ross's master would be so cool. And speaking of which, my biggest hope for Season 2 is learning more about Ross's master. And I'm guessing that Cinder probably isn't his master, I doubt they would reveal that in a teaser. So that begs the question, who is? This character has the potential to be one of Ninjago's greatest, most manipulative villains. It's someone who's been behind the scenes for a long time, and has had a very complex plan that Ross is carrying out, and I'm really excited to learn more about this plan and who this character is. One theory is that Ross's master is the figure on the Gog of Shattering, which I could definitely see, and would explain Ross's connection with the Wolf Warriors. Overall, I'm really excited about long-term storytelling. The Vegeta arc kind of attempted this, but it just wasn't really planned out. They brought it up here and there, and it was definitely exciting, but it wasn't really a driving force of the story until crystallized. However, Ross's Master seems to be. I wouldn't be disappointed if they didn't reveal Ross's Master in Season 2. I think they could keep it a mystery for longer, but I just really hope Season 2 at least tells us more, and gives us more to get excited about. And so that's all for my hopes for Dragons Rising Season 2. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, share with anyone never you know, share your hopes and expectations and just things you're excited about for the season. And I'll see you guys next time.